Uh, so let's take a look at all of this, uh, this idea now that the president talking about an economy that has benefited from tax cuts will also benefit Republicans this November. Let's get the read from DOP fundraiser, Noel Nickbor. We also have Democratic strategist Antoine Seward. I love that name. Antoine. <laughs> uh, I do too. So, yeah. <laughs> Early beats like Neil Cabuto. Anyway, uh, we also have former deputy assistant uh, to uh, Bush 43, Bl Brad Blakeman. Well, so that's a marquee name there. Brad, and with you, begin with you. This notion that the president is going to push, and Republicans certainly want to push it, the tax cuts worked, and they are still working. Um, first of all, is that your view? I have a feeling what you're going to say. Uh, but will it, will it translate to, to, to saving Republicans and keeping the House this fall? I certainly think it's a great message, and I think the Republican mantra should be you can't argue with success. What the president promised, he delivered. As a matter of fact, he exceeded expectations, whether it's on growth, whether it's on taxes. Uh, the American people are actually seeing a politician for the first time in a long time deliver, and, and they're living it now. They're seeing it in their paychecks. They're looking at their IRAs. Uh, we are humming, and I think uh, Democrats have history on their side because since the Civil War, on average, the, the party that controls the White House loses about 33 House seats and two Senate seats. We'll defy that because... President Trump, Republicans have a record. What do you think of that, Antoine? Well, with all due respect, I think he may have things a bit confused. Here's what we do know based on the tone and based on what Poland has told us. Middle class American families have not benefited from the tax scam that's been rammed down the American people's throat by the GOP. Therefore, this will be an election that will determine the temperature of how middle class Americans feel. We have to well, be they are getting a tax cut, right? But they have not felt it in their wallets and their oh, pocketbooks. There are a number of people in this country, forget about trying to make ends meet. They are putting two ends together and they have hoping jobs. they can meet. Well, they are putting two ends together hoping they can meet. Their wages are stagnant. Um, they are still fighting to just. They were really this. stagnant under, Obama. under Barack Obama, right? Well, you have to remember Barack Obama was the one who saved this economy and oh, got well, it wait back a minute. on track. Well, what, what, if, if stagnant oh, wages are an issue to you now, why weren't they an issue to you before? Well, because we had to get the train back on the tracks first. If you we remember, got it. Yeah, it's back For on the track, years. and the president <laughs> is now benefiting from grass that's been planted and watered oh. and nurtured by mm. President Obama. Well, why so can't now we found well, the be both presidents. Why didn't they both have something to do with that? Uh, I think Barack Obama was the one who, again, got He's the not train. Gonna you're, not, you're not going to give any credit I, I, to Donald I, I, Trump. No, I am. I, I am giving him credit for nurturing right. and maintaining the grass that's been planted by I the previous president. I see where we're going. All right. Well, now, uh, you can look at these taxes variety of ways. I mean, the one point four trillion uh, in different ways of looking at it. Seven hundred billion of those were t child tax credits, which mm -hmm. I would think would be in Antoine's interest to something Democrats <laughs> pay attention to. But having said all of that, um, is the president overhyping something that his predecessor started? To his point. Uh, no, I mean I, I think that Trump. So you has won't a, give him credit. A, a you won't give Barack credit. Uh, on on what? Exactly. On saving on, the economy no, and kickstarting the economy. You won't I, give him credit he, on that he part. He did, with a stimulus, we did kickstart the economy. I will give Obama that. I'm not just anti, only, you know, I only like Republicans and I only, I'm, I'm going to be fair. So, yes. Absolutely. I mean, the economy did. is a bipartisan so issue. Let her answer. But, but I will tell you that I feel like with Trump, deregulation is key here deregulation he you know with a lot of the um, you know the FDA with a lot of different uh, organizations uh, under his belt that he's made these appointments deregulation well, that certainly is started key. a cap spending and all of that, right? And, and with the repatriation of funds and with the tax cuts, if you have a big combo like that, um, it, it's a road to success. If you don't believe me, look at what the market's doing. However, when the market's going down because of a lot of the news headlines, it, in general, we've never had, and I mean, Neil, you know more about this than I do, we've never had markets at this level, right? Right, like it is. Continue. Well, but those, well we what do the markets give that they can take it? Right, I mean, and, and so uh, and the, the market is not the economy. Well, let's be clear about fair that. Fair enough, and fair yeah. enough. But but I will say this, and Brad, I'm, the, if, if you're going to hook your wagon to the markets as the president has, and have a lovely day today, and the, the fact of the matter is, though, that a lot of these market guys are still concerned about a wild card being trade and these tariffs. Is it your concern that even some Republicans have raised that whatever benefit we're getting from those tax cuts? of which Antoine is not a huge fan, but, but whatever benefit is coming it, it is wiped out on, on, on tariffs. What do you think? Not at all. I think we may see uh, some retrenchment, but it's worth it. Uh, no pain, no gain. For the oh, uh, last eight years under Obama, we've, we've given away the store. And it's time now to have 
free and fair trade and even playing field. And that's all the president wants. We're not looking to dime anybody. What we're looking for is to get a fair shake from friend and foe. And I think the American people get it. Putting America first is not isolation. You're going after friend and foe. You're going well, after everybody. Absolutely. You're going after Canada. You're going well, after. You're to, right. what, to what expense do you want to, um, Donald Trump to check a political uh, campaign promise? To what extent? To what extent? To that's what extent? The, that, I want, that's the I question want, the Republican Party I has want to success. Answer. I want success, not fertilizer. I there want to make sure that there are concrete gains. And when people take advantage of you, you've got to stick up for it, or you, you, shame I, on you for taking I, it. I won't disagree with that, but going back to this whole tax scam that was passed, you, do know, you do know that there will be generations of people who are going to pay for this tax scam. You do know it's going N to end. Nonsense. Oh, yeah, no, nonsense. This one, this one I hear a lot, and that's why I'm here. It, 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 this fixation De on the cost deficit. Of, listen to me here. You, the fixation with the cost of the tax cuts but not a word about the cost of all the nine to ten trillion and added spending in the same in the same budget why do you focus on the tax cuts and whether we could pay for them but not the almost ten trillion dollars in added spending which we can't come close to pay. well i'm focused on it all neil but i just want to remind people who want to do victory laps about it no but you just what? said you're concerned about the debt yeah I, I i certainly am but but you're concerned more about the money that went back to taxpayers and not the money that was added to spending that they're all going to be on the hook for, rich and poor alike. They are. However, but you these, didn't mention the, these tax cuts are simply <laughs> unnecessary. The debt I could we, argue that 10 the, trillion the, in added the, spending the is debt unnecessary. That we, the debt that generations will have because of these tax cuts but did you, not have you're, to you're be. You're ignoring, what I'm, saying. You're ignoring what I'm saying. By the way, Republicans play this game too when they when they just gloss over that spending. That I'm they not agree. playing the game. I love you. You are playing game because when I ask you why you're making such a big deal of this. These tax cuts and how we pay for them, you ignore the fact we are 10 times that amount in spending, and you're not worried about how we pay for that. Well, well the, as, as my dear friend on the right just said, sometimes you have to give and you have to take. Sometimes you have to give some things to get some things. And I believe that part of this uh, spending bill that you keep reference to, this increase in spending, was part of the giving. Well, what? I it, it was part. It was part of something we had. Bottom line, you're okay with it. Bottom line, you're okay with it. Listen, I'm okay with it because the majority party made it happen. All right, well, you know what? That's like me justifying <laughs> eating an entire apple pie. Uh, it was there. We just had it. All right. Oh, anyway. Uh -huh. Bottom line, I think that you know uh, originally uh, you were wondering if this is going, if the blue wave is going to be able to to make a difference, and I actually think that the red wall is going to stand, and the blue oh, wave is not going to be able to go over it because if we have numbers like we're having now, and and general America, pretty much general America, not talking about the left, but general America, if they're happy with the way things are.